Maybe you're wondering why ski touring? Why sweat when there are ski lifts? Can you answer that question? Yeah, it's just such a brilliant way to get into the backcountry, get away from people, find some fresh tracks and just be alone in the mountains. Hey guys, we're out here in the backcountry in Locks today. We're just taking a lift up and ski down to here where we're gonna start our ski tour. And we got Dave Searle here, Chamonix-based mountain guide. You're gonna share some of your knowledge, huh? Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. Thanks for having me out here. Yeah, it's great to have you here. So just be aware, you know, there's a lot to learn about backcountry skiing and touring. So just, if you're not sure of what you're doing, be sure to go with a mountain guide just to learn the first few basics. Uh, this is just sort of a really brief overview of some of the skills and techniques that you might need. Every ski tour starts at home where you have to do some planning and preparation. All right, now it's time to pick Dave's brain about the planning and preparations phase. So what's important here at home? Yeah, so we need to have a look at the weather and the avalanche conditions mm -hmm. for the day and try and pick an objective that fits in and suits those conditions. Mm -hmm. So today we've got a really warm, sunny day, mm -hmm. so we need to make sure that we're um, getting up there early and getting down early so we're not uh, exposing ourselves to any really warm snowpack. Yeah because that links into the avalanche forecast which we've been given today. There's a considerable risk of gliding avalanches. Yeah. So we need to be up there early so we can start skiing when we want to ski rather than being kind of rushed later mm -hmm. in the day and trying to... Could you explain what gliding avalanche is compared to... Yeah, drive? so as the snowpack warms up during the day, um, the bond between the, the crystals will relax mm -hmm. um, and also against the ground so you might get a big slide that comes off all the way to the ground um, and they're really big s quite often quite slow but really powerful avalanches mm -hmm. so not something that you want to be getting caught up in <laughs> with the knowledge we have today uh, what are our precautions yeah so it would be a good idea to pick an objective that we can um, we can easily um, get up to on on slopes that are under 30 degrees, so slopes that are, uh, are less likely to avalanche because it's not steep enough. Mm -hmm. And then we can always use that same route to escape if we if we decide that the thing that we want to ski is too warm and become unsafe to ski. So having an escape option is a, is a really useful thing. If you're out there just looking up at the mountains, it may feel really hard to know where to go. So, what's your best tools to plan your tour? Yeah, so use a combination of perhaps a guidebook, which has really useful information in it often. Um, a paper map is really good for having a look at the terrain and seeing how steep things are. I often use a digital map like FatMap just to have a look at the exactly the, the terrain. Mm -hmm. um, but often the most important thing is asking locals, maybe local guides or people who live in the area if they've done the ski tour that I'm looking to do or if they've got any good suggestions. So you've got a good suggestion for us? Yeah, compared to you I'm the local here and I haven't done so many tours in Lark so I asked more local locals for advice and uh, this is the route they've suggested us to do. So now we're going to look at what equipment we need. Do you want to pack my bag like a pro? Yeah, sure. So we're obviously we're going into the backcountry, so we need a shovel and a probe. Mm -hmm. So let's get that packed into here, like on the outside, somewhere that it's easy to get to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like that. Nice dedicated pocket for it here. Yeah, it's going to be quite warm today, so we need to make sure we've got enough water. I normally bring a, a litre when it's a warm day. So this works really well. A bit of duct tape on the outside of a, of a bottle is useful as well as a, like a repair kit. I like that. Yeah. Um, we're going to go away from the lifts and people, so maybe having a small first aid kit is a good idea. Um, you never know when a little accident might happen, you have to mm -hmm. repair somebody. Having some good snacks, good idea. So we've got some good Swiss food here. We've got some, <laughs> some nuts, a couple yeah. of Toblerones and a sausage. Why don't we shove that in this bit here. And the final thing we're going to need today is a set of skins because we need those for going uphill. Wait, it's a little bit, but not too bad. Yeah, it's fine, yeah. And then obviously you've got your transceiver, which you're going to be wearing all day. So. Yeah. 
So the next step is getting our ski set up for going uphill. So let's take a look at what we need to do for that. So we've got the skins here and it's great, you've set them up already so that you can get them out of the bag one at a time like this, which is perfect. And the, this bag actually has a, has a wipe on the bottom of it. So you can use that to clean the skin, uh, dry it off before you, before you put the skin on. So we've got a skin ready to be put on the ski here. The base is nice and clean. What I tend to do is I pull, pull the skin apart about a quarter of the way so I can hook it over the tip and stick the first part of the skin on so it's nicely lined up the, so the edges are nicely exposed on both sides. The next step, I put the ski into my hip like this and that way I, when I pull the skin apart I can nicely line it up and stick it down at this, this end. Put the tail clip on, just double check and then smooth the rest of the skin down onto the ski. So how do you set up the binding for walk mode? Yeah, so this is the, the new shift binding and this is a good compromise between a full pin binding which are really popular for lightweight ski touring and, down, and a downhill binding and the way that we set this up is we push this lever uh, forward and th this exposes the pins and these are going to pinch into the front uh, holes of your boot okay and then this this lever we just fold it up like this and in a minute when we stamp down this will lift the brakes up and out of the way so we've got the binding set up so let's have a quick look at how we set up the boot so mm -hmm. it's the most comfortable for walking uphill on touring boots you have a, a walk and ski mode it's normally a lever at the back so we're in walk mode like this and we've got four buckles and what i tend to do is have the top two as loose as possible and the bottom two just have a little bit of pressure uh, and the power strap just have it as loose as you can so a little bit of pressure here is quite good it just keeps your foot down so you're less likely to get blisters at the back okay so to step into these we use a pole to press down on the lever and just hold it down line the boot up and, and release so the pins drop into the holes yeah and then the last thing is to pull the lever all the way up so give it a good hard tug and that way the ski can't come off when we're ski touring and then the final step is just to press down on that lever at the back and that should lift up the brakes. Perfect, yeah, ready for, ready for walking uphill. Can you tell me a little bit how we're going to choose a line up here? And yeah, sure. So if you're not that familiar with how to kind of manage avalanche terrain, a good couple of uh, points are to stay away from really big open slopes. Um, so stick to a ridge and avoid any gully features mm -hmm. um, and, and find your way up uh, trying to find slopes that are less than 30 degrees because that way the snow isn't on a hasn't got the energy to to avalanche so much mm -hmm. so yeah staying on ridges and less than 30 degrees how do you know that it's less than 30 degrees good question you could use something like fat map or even a paper map to work out the slope angle uh, and then you can avoid those steeper areas uh, you can also use a phone to measure the angle of the slope uh, and you can also use your ski poles to exactly measure whether it's 30 degrees or, or less. Okay, so a really quick easy way to find out if a slope is 30 degrees or more or, or less is this. So get a ski pole, make sure that they're set the same, you've got two ski poles set the same length. Um, place the pole down the fall line of the slope so you can mark the distance between the tip and the, the handle of the ski pole and then put one pole on the tip and one pole on the handle and put them together like this. Now if this pole is vertical it's 30 degrees so therefore if it's leaning backwards the slope is less than 30 and if this pole is leaning down the hill it's more than 30. So you should be trying to look for slopes that are less than 30 um, in, until you know a little bit more about avalanche terrain. Thanks for the tips. Should we hit it? Yeah, let's go. Sweet, man. Thanks. So when we're walking uphill, it's really important that we glide the ski across the surface of the snow. And there's two main reasons for that. The first one is that we're not lifting up the weight of the ski. And the second reason is, as we slide the ski across the surface of the snow, it'll smooth the skin uh, fur down and then it will give you more traction on the next step. Okay, so it's quite steep here and we want to turn the skis around. So shall I show you a, a really quick, easy way of making a, a turn here? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. So we come up to where we want to turn. To set up for the turn, we need to get a good base of support. So what we want to do is get a nice flat ski on the lower ski. Now we can set the pole next to it here and reach really high up with our uphill pole. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to swing the ski all the way out 
so we can bring it all the way around like this. And you see how I've got it nice and flat and I'm stamping it down again. Now I'm gonna do a, a change of my poles. So I'm gonna reach up high with this pole and I'm gonna do a very small weight shift, kick the ski around, and now I'm ready to head off in the, in the next direction. Make sense? Yeah. Cool, let's give it a go. Let's talk about uh, how to be a little bit more efficient when we're skinning. So we don't want to overstretch our stride, so we're not reaching too far forward on each stride, but at the same time, not too short, so finding a nice middle ground there. Also, we don't want to go too fast and then burn ourselves out, so keeping a nice steady pace is a really good idea. And the third thing is to not use too big a heel riser. So a lot of bindings have a, have a riser, but if you're on the maximum one, it just means that your skin track is just too steep. The middle rise is good, but generally flat is, is quite a nice comfy angle for the boot. Thanks, Matt. Nice, yeah. Now we finished walking uphill, got a bit sweaty. We walked a bit shorter than initially planned due to it took a bit longer than we thought to film this. Um, so what do we do now to get back into ski mode? Yeah, so there's a few important things when we're uh, getting back into ski mode. So the first thing you want to do is engage the brake and that means that when you take the skin off, uh, the ski is less likely to slide away if you were to put it down on the base. Okay, so now what we want to do is take, take the Reverse what we did when we put the skins on, so take the tail clip off, pull the skin all the way off, and what I tend to do is grab the middle of the skin, like this, and then hold the glue so it's away from each other like that. And I, I equal it up so that both tips are together, mm -hmm. yeah, and what I do is I pinch the middle between my fingers like this and line it up, yeah. And then what I do is I hold my fingers like this, mm -hmm. yeah, and just one movement, sticking the glue together. Then you can fold it once, and you can roll it or fold it again, just so you make a nice neat package to put back in the skin bag. Why did you? Just like that. Well, you did it way neater. <laughs> Look at that shit. <laughs> that works as well, but yeah. How did you do it again? Yeah, I'll show you. I, I really <laughs> lost the track of it. Hold the glue away from itself, mm -hmm. find the middle, and you hold oh, your you finger like this, like and then you push, just stick a, a little bit of the glue together, yeah, mm -hmm. and then grab this, this tab and just slide it oh, through yeah. your fingers. Let me try yeah. that again. Slide it. Perfect. Quite symmetrical too. Cool. Thanks well, for a little trick tip there, it was neat. Yeah, no Finished. worries, yeah. Yeah, so just practice makes perfect with that, but yeah, now we can just get ready to start skiing. Yeah. A snack first, all right? Oh, let's have a snack, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and thank you Dave for coming all the way over here to teach us all. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, thanks for having me over. And just remember, you know, uh, there's a lot to learn about ski touring. So in this video, we've just covered a few basic points. But if you want to learn more of this, I would always recommend going out with a mountain guide and, and getting them to teach you what you need to know. Yes, it's a fair point. We'll have some links in the description where you can find mountain guides, avalanche courses, and the resources that's been mentioned in this video. And let us also know if you want to see Dave back on the show and what you would like to learn from him. 
ice climbing, crevasse rescue, uh, more about avalanches. And I don't know, there's so much to be said. So like and subscribe and see you in the next video.